What's up and welcome to the Mets Old Timers Day pregame show brought to you by City. I'm Mike Janella. We are here at the Team Hotel. We're going to get you some great access and interviews from some of the greatest Mets players of all time before they get ready to go out and play in the Old Timers Day game at City Field. Joining me soon, the guys from the Mets Up podcast too, Mark Lowino and James Shiano. They're going to talk to a bunch of guys as well. No more waiting. Let's get to it. Enjoy the Mets Old Timers Day pregame show. Here we go. Guy who put up some massive numbers in his Mets days. Now we're going to see what he's got still in the tank. Cliff Floyd. <laughs> Cliff, what's happening? Man, not this body. No? <laughs> you look great, though. Hey, I feel good. I feel good. But, you know, I was, I was got some calls, and, and you hear people saying all the time, like, hey, can you still hit? And I have to remind people, like, I'm 50. Like, <laughs> I haven't hit a ball in 10 years. But um, it's going to be fun to get out there, man, and see everybody. I saw Piazza. I saw Johnny Franks. Um, Mike Hampton, so guys that you you know you you um, play with against, uh, battled against, um, has you know every guy that you saw you see today, um, just bring back all the memories of playing. What did you do after you got that call? Do you start going in the in the cage a little more <clears> often <throat> to prep for this, or are you just rolling in cold? You, you you if you try to do too much, you gotta remember, you know where where you at and what you're doing, yeah. right? So I play golf a lot. Okay. So it's kind of the same swing. I'm down in Florida and. You know, I mean, I hit maybe twice, and I had a home run derby. So I feel like I'm going to hit the ball and feel like, you know, I'm an athlete. But if I if I can tell myself athlete and not get hurt, then that's a great day. All right. So you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, if we're I, walking out tomorrow without any bruises, aches, cool. and pains. I got to so. get on the plane tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning, and I want to be walking like I walked in. All right. So that's you know a good, good bar to set. That's not too bad. <laughs> I mean, you got guys here from the 62 team, so I think you're in probably the best shape of almost anybody here today. Well, you know, 62 team, I was looking at the roster, um, and then you look at some of the other guys like Rico Bronia and um, Benny, you know, uh, Benny's here. Um, so I'm, I'm letting these guys, because they're younger than me. Benny's younger than me. Mm -hmm. Rico's younger than me. Uh, Todd Pratt had a little limp walking in, a <laughs> little gimp coming in. So he I might be know. playing possum. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he might, might be, be chilling. playing possum. But um, just to... Just to be here, man, um, in this environment uh, for the first time, I mean, I think this is to start us, hopefully something that lasts for a long time because I think everybody's really welcome in and everybody's having a great time. Well, you played for other franchises, obviously. You cover the game now, so you see a lot of other franchises. Yeah. But to be back here and be part of this part of Mets history, what's that mean to you? It means a ton. I think, you know, I think sometimes, um, <clears throat> excuse me, when you, when you leave the game, you sort of feel forgotten, you know what I mean? So to have these uh, reunions, um, to, to, to sort of just feel like, you know what, I did do this. And, and you know, you have family and friends who get a chance to see you uh, and rem remember sort of some of the stuff you've done. Uh, it's kind of cool. A lot of good pitchers out there today. Yeah. Anybody looking forward to maybe yanking one against? Take it, take it <laughs> a little deep? Well, you know what? Johnny Franks is starting on our team. I don't know where Mike Hampton's at. Uh, Leiter said he doesn't want to face because he he's afraid I might hit one back at him and he can't move. Uh, <laughs> so that's he, he kept telling us, I'm afraid I'm going to get hit in the yeah, face. I'm and, not going to be able to That's what he's saying. So I, I think everybody is kind of a little worried about the injuries as opposed to just, you know, and I said, I tell them everybody, I'm like, we're going to have fun. Like this, you, you gotta remember the fans here are expecting this, you know, this this real game. And I'm like, no, the real game starts at seven ten. Exactly. Yeah. You can see that game; it'll be spectacular. The Rockies are here. We good. Let's let's sweep them. But for the for for this is uh, hopefully, you know, everybody just being able to see their 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 favorite player come back with the jersey on and get out on that field and just take some pictures and have some fun with it. Gotta feel nice putting that back on. It did huh? absolutely. Man, I mean, you know, this is. This is it. You know, it was a little snugger than I thought it would be. <laughs> you saw you had the shirt underneath. That's the problem. A little That's snug, but you know what, man? This is, uh, uh, this is, this, these are memories that you always have, um, you know, and I learned a lot about myself in this city. You know what I mean? Just about how smart the fans are, all the nuances, living in the city, moving to Jersey, um, enjoying the ride on the FDR, getting to, getting to work. All, all our uh, security guys, I mean, you know, there's, there's things you always cherish coming back to New York. All right, man. Orange or blue looks good on you. It's good to see it back on you. Enjoy right. it out there today. Appreciate you. Cliff Floyd, trying to stay healthy out there. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you, Mike. We're here with Matt Terry Leach. Terry, great to have you here today. Thanks, great to be here all the time. How's it feel being invited back to the ceremony and seeing a lot of your old teammates, friends, colleagues? Always good to see them. We always have a good time. Uh, it was a lot more fun when I was here in my younger days. So, uh, I'm a little worried about getting out there today and embarrassing myself. So. Oh, nonsense. It's, it's been a while. Been a while. Any players you're particularly excited to see and reconnect with today? Well, all the guys that we know on our 86 team and, and we, I grew up with, with the Mets in there. And then it's, what's great is I'm getting to meet some people that I didn't know, some of the older players and uh, players that came after me. So it's, it's really cool to, to read, you know, to unite with them and, and just talk about the way it was and the way it is now. <laughs> Do you have a favorite Mets memory that sticks out in your mind? I, I had a lot of good times here. I, the, the first uh, time I came in, joined the team, I was on AAA. Um, the Tidewater, they called me up and I got to meet the team in Chicago. And my first locker mate is uh, Dave Kingman. You know, big, huge Kong is there. And I'm oh, wow, what am I doing here? And, you know, I, I had some games that I pitched that were very I had a 10 inning, one hit shutout uh, against Philadelphia. And then I, you don't see that anymore. No, not, no, you don't, no. I, yeah, I, I have no idea how many pitches I threw that day. I mean, I threw a ton. But they kept letting me go out, so it was my only start for in about two or three years. And uh, I, I was too dumb to say I'm tired. But it was good. That's so awesome, Terry. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us today. You're welcome. Happy to be happy here at this event. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Terry Lynch, everybody. Back to you, Mike. Appreciate it, guys. Here with one of the hardest throwers in Mets history. Actually, just telling me a story before we started recording how you once broke Doc Gooden's fingers playing catch. It's Billy Wagner. What's up? Hey, it's great. Thanks. Good to good to be here. What a great event. So you're, it's no bad blood between you and Doc if you see each other, guys. God, today. no, 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 no. What what a great guy. I, you know, a historian of baseball, and uh, you know, I was a young rookie playing, and uh, Doc was uh, making his comeback, and uh, we're 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 playing catch. We're on the backfield playing catch, and I didn't have much governor on how to play catch, and so you know I'm I'm throwing normal, and I end up uh, breaking his, one of his fingers, and I've got Jeez. a picture to this day with him wrapped up and taking a picture. So it's just pretty cool. Uh, those are the stories you love hearing on a day like today, where you bring everybody back. So a story like that makes me think, makes me wonder, because everyone knows you brought the heat when you're in your playing days. What are you ticking on the radar gun these days? Oh, I don't know. I, I'm pretty good from 45 feet because I'm now I'm a high school coach, so. Uh, I don't know. I'm just hoping that I, nothing gets hurt. That's all I'm going for right here, to have fun and, and, and uh, really just be around the guys. So I'm just really hoping not to get hurt. Well, the pitching side, I think, is the most interesting to me because you're up there as a hitter. Everyone does, you know, beer league softball. You can swing a bat. But the pitching, how, from 1 to 100, how much effort are you going to be putting in out there? I don't know. It depends on how much effort everybody else is. Cause you're going to kind of gauge. You're going to kind of gauge that right there, and so you know you don't want to go up there and you you don't want to be that guy. You, you're really running this, and this is you know this event's the first time in like since '94 that's been. So you don't want to go out there and <laughs> they're going. I don't want that guy back. That guy. <laughs> that guy's no fun. You know he takes it way too serious. So you know I want it to be lighthearted and have fun. I want the fans to enjoy what they're seeing. I mean they need to to enjoy that. And I, I'm excited for that that moment. So you've been talking to a lot of guys since you got here. You know some of your teammates. Who do you think is going to be taking it the most competitive? Well, I t you know, I'd have a hard time not seeing Todd Pratt take it super serious. I love Todd. He's one of the great. I played with him in Philly. I played him here. And I just, you know, I just think he's such a great guy. And he just loves the game and his teammates. And so he, he was uh, really just a, I think he, he, he will enjoy it. He don't, nobody wants to get embarrassed, right? Nobody wants to. I think we're all going to be like, hey, you know, you know, we're not going to be worried about anything. A guy hits a home run off of you or, or something like that. I think it's going to be fun and, and lighthearted, but, you know, I think it'll be funny because it's been a long time since any of us have done something like this. When was the last time you threw something competitive? Oh, well, it, it's been many a year. But uh, in high school, you know, I would still put my, my nails on and go out and through live BP, live, and so, uh, but it's been a while. Uh, you know, you could do that, and then uh, you had weeks to recoup. But now, now I'm like, oh, I just don't want to get hurt because somebody's YouTubing. My my kids and my family are like, 
hope somebody's videoing it. I hope it's going to be on TV so so I can see this. And I'm like, gosh, I don't know how much I want you to see because <laughs> I, I used to be good. <laughs> now you're going, oh, that, look at that old guy. Well, I think hopefully whenever this is live streaming, it'll be the suggested video afterward. It'll be, you know, your playing day highlights when you can see your back <laughs> yeah. touching the triple digits. Absolutely. Yeah, let's go back to those days. <laughs> Love it. Billy Wagner, uh, one of the greats to ever do it. You got a pretty good pitching staff that you're a part of today. I'm excited <laughs> to see you guys uh, maybe lock this thing down. Well, I tell you, you know, you look in there and you got Doc and David Cohn and you got, uh, you just got some dudes out there. I'm like, uh, I'm pretty, I, I mean, they may not need me. It'll be awesome to just sit back there and watch uh, Big Mike and, uh, and those guys play and hit and enjoy the conversations in that, that locker room. And that's really the part that you miss as an athlete is those moments. So being in that and, you know, the game will be fun, but just the interactions will be great. If you do come in, are you coming out of the bullpen or are you taking the short way from the dugout? Well, I hope, that, well, I hope by now they'll let me just come around because there's no real warm-up anymore. It's let's just let's go. Yeah, We're right. past that. <laughs> Love it. Locked and loaded. Billy Wagner, appreciate you. No, thank you. Thanks, Mike. All right, we're here with former Mets pitcher Dennis Cook. Dennis, how do you feel? What have you been up to? Uh, I feel great and uh, been up to just taking care of kids, uh, doing a little coaching up in Cape Cod League in the summer and uh, also a little bit of coaching over in Europe. Nice. Yeah. You excited to be back today? Very excited. It's a great deal. I uh, really appreciate the Mets including us. Expect to see you back on the mound? Uh, yeah, I brought my glove. Uh, if you know, there's a spot for me, then I'd love to have a chance to go out and try to get an hour or so. Been doing anything to stay in shape, keep ready? Um, well, just throwing BP to the kids up in the Cape and that kind of stuff. Um, working in my yard, so that kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, favorite memory as a Met? Favorite memory as a Met, um, there's a lot of them. It's hard just, just to identify one, but I just think the guys, we had such a great group of guys, uh, you know, with Robin and Al and those guys. So I'm uh, excited to get back to see them and uh, hang out and visit. Awesome. Estes Cook, back to you, Mike. One of my favorite Mets of all time, Benny Agbayani. I remember being up at like 6 a.m. watching that Grand Slam uh, in Tokyo that you hit. So great to talk to you. Welcome back to Old Timers. You don't look that old, man. You look like you're still in game shape. How you feeling? Uh, I'm old. <laughs> right, I may look like I'm in game shape, but my body's <laughs> took a toll over the years. Well, you're back now. What What are you expecting out of the day today? Once you hit that field, how's it going to go? Um, going to be pretty excited, but uh, other than that, just hopefully I'll be walking normally after the game. <laughs> But my body aches, so I'll be all right. Yeah, when is this going to hurt the most? Is it tomorrow morning? Is it a couple days later? What are See, you thinking? Uh, probably during the game. <laughs> <laughs> Not wasting any time, right? No. <laughs> well, they got you out there in the starting lineup playing left field. That's got to be a bit of an honor to still feel like, hey, they, they want to pencil me in there to start things off. <laughs> yeah, it is an honor, you know, just to be out here and having fun and, you know, just looking at all the old faces that the Mets uh, went you know, through the systems, at, um, you know, the teams that the Mets had, and it's great to be here. Who are you most excited to see that you didn't play with that wasn't part of your generation? Because they got Mets from back to 62, so who are you pumped to maybe meet for the first time? Uh, it was awesome. I met Frank Thomas yesterday, oh, nice. and it was, you know, an honor to meet him, you know, because I know, you know, he was a big-time player here in Mets, uh, Mets history, and I was just was telling him if he was playing now, I mean, he would have been a millionaire. <laughs> I think a lot of guys could say that, yeah. yeah, with the way the game has changed so much. Yes. What's, what was the prep like for you getting ready for this? Do you stretch a lot? Do you, do you hang out with the guys first? Do you take any BP? Um, probably going to just shoot the breeze and just hang out with everybody and, you know, just enjoy this moment. It's a great honor, a great moment to be around all these guys and to, uh, you know, see all the fans again. And, you know, just, just wonderful to be out here. That's got to be something you're looking forward to, that ovation, I'm sure, hearing those, you know, 40,000 plus. Yeah, hopefully I get a yeah, uh, a yeah or a boo, you know, and then I'll be, oh, I'm back to normal here in New York. <laughs> it's not going to be a boo. i got a pretty good feeling. Nobody's going to be booing Benny Agbayani. Well, Benny, appreciate it. Make sure you ice down afterward, and uh, good luck out there. Is it ice down before or ice down after? <laughs> Maybe before, during, and after. I don't know. I'm getting That sounds better. Here. Yeah, there we go. We'll enjoy it. Back to the Mets stuff, guys. See who they got next. Thank you, Mike. Here with Doug Sisk, member of 1986 Mets. Doug, very glad to have you today. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. What sticks out as your favorite moment from that 1986 season and run? Uh, probably in the clubhouse in spring training. Yeah, you had a big personality in that clubhouse, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, Davey, <laughs> yeah, Davey pretty much let everybody know that we're going to win. Yeah. And I mean, it was like, whoa, you know, don't put pressure on all of us. But yeah, and then it all comes through at the end. It's kind of really, yeah. kind of, if you look back at it, 
I would say probably a majority of the stuff that went on, uh, you don't really, you're so caught up in playing the game that you don't look at 30 or 40 years later on how important everything was. You guys dissect the heck out of this, man. We are, <laughs> I get more stuff. There isn't a day that goes by where somebody doesn't ask me a question. Yeah. About something, especially the documentary just came out too. The ESPN. I last saw it. Yeah, actually, you know, I, I thought they did a pretty good job yeah. on that. You know, some stuff that's you know, it's TV. Absolutely, so they got to they got to do something, but pretty pretty close. Which your teammates that were here today are you most excited to reconnect with? God, I haven't seen Jesse Roscoe in a long time. It's been a long time. Um, I love seeing Terry Leach. Uh, I saw John Stearns, which I didn't get to play with very much. Um, yeah, dude. Saw him in his prime. Oh, yeah. geez, a great player. Um, you know, just just a bunch of everybody. I don't even know who all is going to be here. I did see a <laughs> roster, so that doesn't mean it hasn't changed. Uh, you know, I'd love, I'd love to see Sid. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of those guys. Yeah, well, last quick question we're going to ask you. We know you sold wine for a while <clears> after <throat> your retirement. So I'm going to paint you a picture, and I want you to pick me the wine. Oh, my God. You have a nice New York strip steak, <gasps> medium rare, uh, garlic mashed potatoes, a couple pieces of asparagus. Which wine are you providing? God, we're going to go with a Malbec. Come yeah. on. Nice Dago Red yeah. from Argentina. <laughs> you bet. Yeah. And they got a nice one here at the hotel I saw, the room. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. A little overpriced, but and here's the thing guys in the restaurants, always remember, the glass of wine pays for the for the bottle. Mm. The three hundred percent is where they break it down. So if that glass of wine's ten bucks, you can bet that that bottle's thirty dollars. <laughs> That's how they do it. So when you go in a restaurant, they're like, good friend Doug, you mean to tell me that bottle's only six bucks and you're charging me $13 for a glass of wine? No, that's not going to happen. So, but yeah, that's why you see a lot of restaurants with no wines that you know about and you see in the stores because they don't want to be held accountable. <laughs> Doug, thank you very much. Hey, you Pleasure guys, to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, guys. Back to you guys, Mike. We've got Al Leiter here now joining us. Welcome to Old Timers Day. I hate using the phrase. No the, kidding. Right? right? What should we call it instead? You're a guy good with words. I think that, honestly, when I think about as soon as you retire, I don't know what the time has to lapse for guys to not feel like, I'm not doing Old Timers game. Right. Uh, you see it all the time with some of the um, guys uh, that retire. Uh, no, I'm old now. I got a little I bit of gray. So. You look great. I'm getting fatter. <laughs> um... How's the arm? I'm losing my hair. That's the important thing. How's the arm? Does the arm still work? My arm's okay. All right, that's um, good. That's but all. But don't can. ask me about my hip, my knee. Three surgeries. Jeez. Hip. Other than that, life's doing great. great. Yeah, no, feeling no, good. No, it's good. It's good, man. I'm blessed. I'm lucky. I'm grateful. Um, this is awesome. I'm so happy um, that Steve Cohen and all the decision makers decided to do this. I always thought that about. I think that about every team. Yeah. You know, we retire, but we don't die, not yet. And, you know, just because you retire doesn't mean the fans that liked and loved and loved watching you. They don't forget about you. They still, it's still there. Yeah. I don't say that because I'm a fan of this, of the, I'm a fan of the Mets, but I'm a fan of the sport. And, uh, or all sports, right? Whatever your, your time period. What was your time period? Who were your guys? You were my guys. I was right in high school, that 99-2000 team. I was so, up so there every night, go. up every morning with you guys. And I, and I say that to people who like run in uh, you know, licensing and things in Major League Baseball about, uh, you know, about just when, you guy, when a guy retires. Pick your guy, David Wright, right? He was adored. Like, okay, he's retired, but people still love David Wright. Yeah. You know? And on and on, Mike Piazza and the rest of it. So, so to have events like this... One, it's awesome to see people I haven't seen in a long time, the reunion factor. And then I put my, my, my fan head on with people love this stuff. Yeah. Like I, when, I'm, when I walk around and I see guys that I, oh my God, there's Felix Mian and oh, Lord Shamsky and Leah Cleon Jones. Yeah, like, so who, are, who are you pumped? Who are your guys <coughs> that you love seeing? Well, I just mentioned three of them. So I'm, I'm a little too young. I, I marginally remember the 1969 World Series. And I only remember it because my dad was a huge Mets fan. Yeah. Born in Manhattan, grew up in uh, Bay Shore, Long Island. And he liked the lovable losers. And I'm one of seven kids. I had five older brothers. Wow. He's the youngest uh, boy. And, um, you know, we, we watched the Mets. So obviously, you know, with Tom Seaver passing, like, that was my guy. And then I got a chance to have him around, do, you know, here with the seven years with the Mets and him doing the broadcast and all that. That was amazing. Saw so John Matlack, you know, then go through the 70s when it was, you know, after 73, it got real lean. And then the trading of Tom Seaver, of course, was was terrible. But, um, you know, all of it. Like, I, I can, I know the, I know the history. 
Now, for someone, and, and look, we know the history from the outside. You're part of the history, so to see you this, like, geeked up about yeah. it, it makes me feel like this is a cool thing, totally, too. Totally, totally, it is. To feel I, that. I'm super genuine and, and dead serious about how excited I am. So you're going to go out there. Yeah. How, how much are you giving out of 100%? No. I told Piazza, I hope Mike gets up. I'm going to throw him a little meatball on the inner half. It's going to go just right into the barrel. Don't hit it back at me, because I will throw it back at you. <laughs> And, uh, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting for the moment that something is going to go a little off script today. Well, if, if I'm throwing to somebody I know and I like, maybe I'll get a little goofy with them, but, uh, or, you know, had played with. No, that, yeah, no. I, no. I don't think anybody in the stands is looking for, you know, guys to swing and miss, right? Then you want to see a couple Except of these guys. Except for you on the mound. But nah, uh, <laughs> no, come on, big dog. I might throw it like 60 miles an hour. <laughs> What, what what's the art? Well, I mean, you feeling good? You got to warm up. So what's I the... feel good. I you know I I I still throw. You know my son uh, he plays uh, with the Rangers. Yeah. So you know leading up to spring trains and all that, I'm always playing catch with him. So no no, I'm not going to pretend that I got something. <laughs> I could go in there to Buck Showalter and say I could get you a lefty out maybe because I can spin it still. But no no. That's great. Who are you most pumped to face? Is it Piazza? Um, you know what I was hoping uh, straw. I don't know if uh, I don't know if Daryl's going to get in there, but I think Daryl Strawberry just because he's awesome and an icon. Uh, Mike would be fun. Yeah. Well, straw, you got the lefty lefty matchup. Yeah, too. but I don't you care. So bench. long as he doesn't hit it back at me, I'll, right. I'll, I'll try to float it in or half. If you keep the ball in the inner half, you're going to pull it. All right. It's too slow. Exactly. Oh, well, we got good advice from Ally. Trying to keep the face, because you're, you're on TV a lot, too. you got to keep the face good. No ball's coming back at you oh, God, on the mound yeah. today. <laughs> Have a great time yeah, and enjoy it from, you know, he's a legit baseball fan. It's just great to see that enthusiasm coming yes, out of you for a day you. like today. It means a lot. Yeah, it's going to be a great day. All Mets right. fans, enjoy. Back to the Mets up guys now. So we're here with one of the original Mets, big time hitter, Frank Thomas. Frank, you're scarce a little bit. You had a fall the other day. How are you feeling? Feeling better? I feel good, yeah. Feeling strong? Yeah. How's it feel to put the jersey back on? <laughs> it's, it's probably my last one. We're going to see you go out there and take some swings today? No. <laughs> Only if I can put the fence right here, me right here, and I can hit it over the fence. <laughs> Otherwise, no. No, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to even take a chance. And my legs, from, from, from my knees down, I just, I, I don't know where they're going to give away. And doctors have gone every place, and no one has ever told me what's wrong with me. Nobody. I just got to live with it. Doesn't hurt me to sit, doesn't hurt me to sleep, it just hurts me to walk. Excited to be back here today? Oh, it's great. Always great to be back because this club is probably the, the only club that treats me better than anybody else. Um, oh, I fall in love with this club because they've been very, very good to me. I mean, I live in Pittsburgh. They, they think in Pittsburgh, they think from 60 back this way, there's no tradition. And the, and the ball club is 125 years old. But from here, back, because of 60, 60, uh, 60 years, 71 and 79, three World Series, that's what it says, that's where tradition is. I don't believe you. Awesome. Frank, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Okay. Enjoy your day. Okay.